Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a baby rag quilt. So let's take a look. I thought this was so cute and so pretty. It's got all of these raggedy seams here that are just really nice and soft. Now this is a project where it does not require any special sewing skills. As long as you can do a straight stitch or close to a straight stitch, this is going to be easy. Also, it's a great project for teaching your children how to sew, those that are mature enough to sit at a sewing machine. So the fabrics that you're going to need is, you're going to need two different fabrics. Now, on the back, I have this solid fuchsia color. And the reason why I selected it is that if you'll notice in the seams, that fuchsia color pops out. So I selected the pink that was in this fabric. So when you're selecting your fabrics, select a color that you want to be reflected in this seam. So it needs to be a sharp contrast between the front and the back in order for it to show. So you're going to need two pieces of fabric and each fabric is cut one and a quarter inches uh, yard, excuse me, one and one quarter yards of both, one and one quarter yards. All right, so when you're working with your fabrics, you want to take both fabrics and bring the selvage edges together. Now it's hard to get them perfectly together because fabric stretches and when you get it off the bolt, often your selvage edges are not lined up together. So take that time to do that. So line it up and also your other fabric. Line it up as best as you can. Then you're going to take those fabrics and lay them on top of each other as they're folded in half. So up here on my mat is my zero line here as well as here. So you have two zeros lines, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, so forth. Okay, so you want to take those folded edges and bring it up on your top zero line here. On this side, you want to take your fabric and pull it past this zero line here. So bring it past because when you purchase your fabric, it's going to be very jagged. So you need to clean up those edges. And what we're doing is we're cutting both pieces of fabric at the same time to be 40 inches square. So once you've done that, you've lined everything up, you want to take your ruler edge here and place it on the zero line here as well as up here on the zero line. So place it there. Once you've got it lined up, then take your rotary cutter and make sure your blade is relatively new, if not new, because you're going to be cutting through a lot of layers of fabric on this project. So then go ahead and cut all the way down. Okay, and move your hand as you go along. Now, don't move your fabric. Leave it right where it is. Now we're going to go over here to where the 40 inch line is. Now you're going to have excess fabric over here. So we're now going to cut on this edge. So you're going to place it on the 40 inch line here as well as up at the top. So line your ruler up. Make sure your folded edge is still on that zero line. Once you have it lined up, then with your rotary cutter, go ahead and cut the excess off. So now both pieces of fabric are 40 inches wide this way. Now you're going to grab a hold of this end where you just cut and pull it out maybe an inch or two so that you can see where the 20 inch line is. Again, make sure it's, it's lined up at the top on the folded line. So here's my 20 inch line. 
So I'm now going to line up that ruler's edge on that 20 inch line. Okay? And have your ruler straight along this way as well as that way. And with your rotary cutter, you're going to begin cutting off that lower edge. Once you've got that cut, now both pieces are going to be 40 inches square. All right, so let's move on. Now I want you to unfold your fabric. So unfold both. And you're going to begin placing them on top of each other. So let me get this open a little bit for you. So un unfold both pieces. And you're going to smooth out all of the edges as best you can. Now one of the things that I find helpful when smoothing out fabric is to take my long ruler and glide it across the fabric. And this helps you to get all the lumps and bumps. Now don't push on your fabric, just glide. So make sure all of the edges are straight. Smooth all the way around all four sides. Now, now you're going to take both raw edges. You've still got your two pieces together. You're going to fold it in half. Now always smooth your fabrics as you go along. Take your time and make sure everything is lined up. So now that you've got it folded in half, up here at the fold line, you're going to place pins all along this fold line here. Then you're going to stitch a three-quarter inch seam all the way across. So three-quarters of an inch from this folded line, you're going to stitch all the way across from one end to the other. Now unfold it and then take this other edge. Let me unpin this. There you go. Now you're going to take this edge and fold it in towards that center seam. And once you've got it lined up, take your time, always smooth your edges. Then go ahead and pin this edge all the way across. And again, stitch three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch from here in. Stitch all the way across. Then take the other side, smooth everything out as you go along. Don't leave that part out. And line it up again. Bring it in towards that center seam. Line it up. Smooth your fabric out. And then place pins again along here. All the way across. And again, stitch three quarters of an inch from this folded edge. Come in and stitch all the way across. Okay, now once you've got it stitched, you're going to take each one of the fold area and we're going to trim this three quarter inch seam down to a half inch. So take your ruler, take your half inch line right here and place it right on your stitch line. So place it on top. Take your time getting it all lined up and then trim, excuse me, I'll trim this and then trim the excess off. Do all three of your seams, one, two, three, all three seams like that. And then when you're done, your seams should look like this. You've got these nice clean edges, okay, and you can already see the pink coming through. So do all three seams like that. Then unfold it and you're going to fold it in half again. Now you want to open the seams up here 
at the fold line. So you have it folded in half, bringing raw edge to raw edge, and you're going to stitch again three quarter inch seam all the way across from one end to the other and make sure these seams are open. Then unfold it, bring the raw edge in, make sure you smooth out even the fabric on the sides here because it will shift as you move it around. Bring it up towards the seam up here, make sure your seams match right along here and open the seams up pin them open all three and again stitch three quarters of an inch along here from this raw edge in then take the other side and fold it in open your seams up okay pin them open and then again stitch three quarters of an inch from the folded edge all the way in. So now you've done six seams. So one more last sewing step, one more last one. Now you want to stitch one half inch from this raw edge in. So come in a half inch and you're going to stitch around all four sides. Now make sure your seams are open as you stitch. Okay, so let me go to my little diagram over here. So some little tips for those of you that are brand new at sewing and you really don't know how to handle your fabric at the sewing machine is when you're doing this half inch seam, this dash line represents my uh, stitch line on the outer edge. As you're sewing along, you're starting and you, excuse me, you stop one half inch away from this edge. Leave your needle down and lift up your presser foot. Then turn your fabric and stitch down the next side. So do that at all corners. When you leave that needle down you won't lose your place. Now you're going to begin clipping. But one of the things I like to do before I start clipping is I'll take this little point off and I just slightly round it in here. Just take a little bit off, not very much. Then my first cut is going to be in towards that corner and then the other couple of cuts are going to be more of a pie shape until you get around and then it's just straight in. Now when you're clipping do not clip past that stitch line. Stop just before the stitches uh, start. So don't cl clip through that. Now when you're clipping let me go back to my little sample here. This is a pair of rag quilt scissors and they have a little safety lock on here. This is not something you want to let little, little children use. Make sure if you're having your children do this that they're mature enough to know the bad things that can go wrong with these shears, okay? These are great if you've got arthritis or you have problems with your hands. They're so easy to use and they're very, very sharp. So you're just gonna go in and clip and just keep going along, all along there, about quarter inch or so little clips, okay? Now, one of the things that you want to do is you want to put it through the washing cycle. So here's my finished one. In order for it to get fluffy like this, you need to put it in your washing machine, wash it up, get all the chemicals out of it, send it through the drying cycle. Normally what I do, and by the way, as it's drying, clean out your lint trap frequently because it will get clogged up because you've got all this little fuzz clogging it up. But I find if I wash, if I 
get it wet and dry one more time. So on my second time around, I just put it through the rinse and spin cycle and dry it again. And that's how it gets really nice and fluffy. So every time you wash and dry it, it gets fluffy. So isn't this pretty? I just really love how this turned out. It's a really pretty project. Now let me show you some samples of other rag quilts. Now here's one where the fabric on the back is this gray and white polka dot. And if you'll notice, the gray is very subtle in the seam. So if you like a softer look, then pick a little bit lighter color. But pick something that's going to show through there. Now let me show you one more that I did. This has actually three layers of fabric and I actually cut the seams a little wider. They're about three and a uh, excuse me, three-fourths of an inch seam. Now on a little baby quilt, I prefer the half inch, but if you're making a large uh, rag quilt, let's say for an adult, then uh, you can also make them a little bit thicker if you like. It all, it depends on what you like. Okay? All right. Well, I hope you try rag quilting. Like I said, you don't need any special sewing skills to do this. And by the way, a little tip. When you're doing all that clipping, put on a good movie because the clipping is going to take you probably an hour and a half whereas the sewing is only about an hour. So really, it's, this project is something you can do in an afternoon, okay? Well, to keep informed on all my future videos, and I have lots of videos, I've got, I don't know, maybe 120, I forgot to check the last time. There's so many videos on the Sewing Room channel. So go to the Sewing Room channel homepage by entering in the little YouTube search block, enter the Sewing Room channel, and you'll see my homepage and you'll see all of the videos that I have, and I have many projects for beginners in there. Now, to keep informed on all the future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down there in the lower right hand corner. It's red, it says subscribe. And then towards the end of the video, you'll see a round picture of my face. That is also a subscribe button. Click on either one of those. YouTube's gonna prompt you for your email address. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube sends you a brief email with a big old button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and happy sewing.